do, 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 do. Welcome to DTLT today. Hey. Uh, looks like all the other DTLT members have abandoned us. Where is everybody? It was so, so we've full decided here. to hire Alan. <laughs> he's the newest. He's the cu- his job is to actually man the cuddle couch at all times here at DTLT. Yes. I'm also available for weddings and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> exactly. He's really good to, to have around. He takes really nice pictures. <laughs> he cleans up really well. The poop is scooper all over the campus has worked out perfectly. Um, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I read all your books. <laughs> all your posts. I got a new book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, we're here today, and uh, we'll be talking about um, MOOCs, presentation styles, and it's a post that Alan wrote a while ago um, that I think piques some interest, and rightfully so. And so I'll let Alan frame how he wants to discuss it, and I'll just be a respondent, and I'll say <laughs> yes or no, and maybe so. And Noise Professor, you're out there in the chat. You chime in, and anyone else, please. Yeah, it's uh, me, you, and then Zach on the, the Western Cuddle Couch. That's right. So here's the deal. You basically wrote a post in your way, having fun, saying, look, if you're going to do a MOOC and you're going to be presenting to you know this large audience, make it compelling. Well, it, it, it's not strictly tied to the MOOC. I mean, we could talk about MOOCs for a while, and it's not sure. to bash that. And then I really didn't want to particularly um, bash... You know Martin Weller, who did this this video, but yeah. I mean, really, to me, the video is is basically someone reading, um, and, and I thought Stephen Downs was kind of reading too. He told me he just ad libbed that, but that's his way. And it's always amazed me that people who are dynamic in person. I've not met Martin, but you know some of the videos that he's done um, are really well put together. That somehow people get into this frame set of you know I'm doing something academic and I have to go into this like serious kind of. Um, whatever that voice is that people put on. Yeah. Um, and both of them more or less said, you know, I did this, I didn't have enough time to do a good video, so I just did X. And to me, if you're not going to, and that, and we know video does take time, but then again it doesn't. When you look at what your students do um, in Days 106, um, I think the, the skills and the time to produce um, something good uh, is not much more, you know, really than sitting down, spending an hour conceptualizing it. Yeah. Um, I- even if you are going to sit in front of the camera, but just just to get up there and just blip it out, stream of conscious. Some people do it great. Uh, I don't do it well, but I think if you're going to do video, um, you know, it's. I-, I thought, you know, for Martin, it- it's a trailer, man. This is the thing that you want to attract people to come to your session on this MOOC. And if you think of things as a trailer, and you look at the kind of things that people produce all the time on YouTube, um, with not fancy equipment and not a lot of time. Um, I just think it's kind of a lame excuse to say, um, I, you know, I didn't have enough time to do a decent, interesting video. I, I think video needs to give more attention. So let me ask you this. If I play you know, a little bit into that idea, how do you, you know, basically say, look, we're talking about ideas. We're talking about digital scholarship here. We're talking about scholarship. Right. This isn't necessarily about creating a trailer for the next car chase yeah. and, you know, Cobra 4. Right. right. This is about ideas that are important and people want to tune in don't necessarily need the kind of, you know, right. the, the cheap effect. Right, right. What do you say to that? You mean how would I do that video if I was going to talk well, about Well, how that? would you say if they said, look, you know, why video is so important or a particular kind of video? You know, yeah. This can be compelling just by what I'm communicating. It could be. You know, and I did think afterwards that, you know, that MOOC does, you know, appeal to a lot of people who are not, you know, English first language speakers. So on some level you could say, yeah, it should be kind of basic. Uh, to me, it just reiterated the content that I read on the screen, and to me, that's not a good sign of the use of the video. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, Martin did construct a good series of activities for that MOOC um, week yeah. that he's he's doing this week. He had he designed that that whole piece of it. And, you know, coming about how would you do a video that kind of compels people about you know what digital scholarship is? You know, there's lots of ways you could do it creatively. Um, you know, it could be just, you know, visual, it could be a mashup, it could be, you know, honestly, sometimes I get stuck, you know, and I'll just, you know, stick a stuffed animal in front of the camera. Um, but... Yeah, um, well, you also did that one for eTug that was amazing. You had something in your dryer talking to you about the future, like your dryer yeah. came alive, and that was a really compelling video. Yeah, and, and I, I through the DS-106, I, you know, I got... I tried more of the parts where, you know, I'm only one person doing these, but yeah. trying on things where you do different voices is an interesting exercise. 
Uh, you know, and people can do this with themselves. I've done a couple of presentations where I just did sort of, you know, point counterpoint uh, with myself and have my own critical voice as a second character. Sure. Uh, you know, that's a way that. to go about that. You did those early on when you had that dog and you were talking to the dog, right? Yeah. And, and that was awesome. And that was in the early parts of DS-106. Yeah. One of the things that's interesting to me is how much personality do you start to put into your scholarship? Because this raises a whole bigger question. Yeah. You were in grad school in the 90s. I was in grad school in the 90s up through the aughts. And one of the things I hated about grad school and I was glad to get out of it is the kind of way it sucks personality out of those presentations. Yeah. When I came into the ed tech field and I realized that people were like, like you and Brian Lamb were wearing tinfoil hats while preparing to present at, you know, ELI. Yeah. And there was a whole kind of theme to what you were presenting. For me, it liberated so much of the way in which you could actually talk and share this stuff. Yeah, although one could say, you know, we weren't trying to become, you know, tenured professors or, and you know, but, you know, that's why I like working with Brian. That's why I like working with you. It's like I've been here at DTLT, you know. You know how to do good, serious, interesting stuff, but you also know how to make fun of yourself. And, you know, that's not everybody's thing. Yeah. You know, so, uh, but, you know, to me, you want to get people excited about your, your subject. And there's a lot to be excited about with digital scholarship. You know, it's it's changing our field. You know, people are really, you know, running their heads against old systems of publishing and promotion. You know, and there's a lot you can do there with just, you know, conceptually the idea of, you know, revolution, changing the system, you know, contrasting the old and the new. You know, there, there's yeah. lots of ways to, to spin that. You did a trailer like that for NMC back in the day, I think, if I remember one of their, yeah, one of yeah, their revolution-themed yeah, yeah. conferences. Well, I mean, really and you, well do, you, do, you do probably more video than me or in terms of your teaching. I mean, how do you go? I mean, people, I think, have this preconception, like, I'm not creative enough or I don't have the skills to come up with something interesting. So I'm going to turn on the camera and say... This week we're going to be talking about the topic of, yeah. you know, and, and and you know, and people watch interesting and compelling media all the time, whether it's on, you know, you know, I, I think in some ways if you break down like good TV commercials, you know, yeah. if if you could think of your trailer for your session or the intro to your course, um, to something as basic as combined as a sixty second commercial, I mean that forces you to really boil it down, uh, you know. So I think when you turn on the camera and press the on button and you have that um you know time lapse just to go on and on and that on. ability to really like that one kuros did where he said who is alex Kuros?" yeah yeah, right? they, the, yeah. they put him up with like paris hilton like yeah. he did a really good job alex does a great job but you know he he also studies a lot of the media and and you know you know i, I don't know whether people really immerse themselves I, I don't immerse myself enough in kind of youtube culture to yeah you know get, get a strand of it and and it might come uh, you know across as being kind of you know copying out to what's trendy and it's not yeah it's not the serious academic part. i personally found it compelling i mean when me and tom started doing those ed tech survivalist videos yeah as a way to talk about an idea that brian lamb was talking about this whole idea of survivalism culture and what happens when you know the internet is kind of seen as our last sustainable resource and i just thought it was fun to come up with ideas and frame them around films right i mean and that was to me is it just it was just made the job fun we got zero audience we hit it we got rid of noise professor and <laughs> ben you, you see you guys <laughs> <laughs> never worry about audience i know never. i know um it's one six but i am i mean i'm compelled by the idea of uh making it fun but also kind of building in this idea of a narrative that is speaking to more than just hey you know i'm going to sit here and talk about my particular ideas as they stand and you could read my blog post or you could kind of subscribe to the ebook or whatever mm -hmm. you know there's something else there there's an ongoing conversation but what would you say to people who don't feel like they have the uh, ability or creative uh, part to produce that because you know not everybody is going to come up with um a narrative for a video you know so yeah. you know what is the stuff that you do with faculty here to just to try to maybe elevate um, you know and it's not just making stuff that that's funny or or relating to pop culture you know there's there's a certain you know dynamicism to creating um, a video I, I have this example I've shown um, at a couple ones just a, a different way to come about video I mean, it, it was all about, it was, it was demonstrating this uh, possibility that um, you could create a battery to power an iPhone out of oranges. Um, That's right, I saw that. But yeah. it, it, I mean, your typical approach to be would just to do a kind of documentary style where you just chronicle, you know, 
this is the parts I got, and this is you know cutting it up and, and you know assembling it, and this is what we did. Yeah. And the way they did it was much more cinematic. With it started off with music, and and there was a you know the woman scientist, and you didn't really know who she was or what she was doing. She's cutting oranges, um, and, and the cuts and the pacing of the video were much more story like. Uh, yeah. You know the message was the same, but you know thinking more about how that video message, I, I guess. You know, we're just kind of catching up with how we embrace, you know, communicating by video. We're get, we're seeing people getting more uh, conscious of using more images, um, yeah. and, and get shifting their presentations to more use of photos uh, over text, and maybe it's just a longer transition for people to, you know, go to that next media level. I think that's right, and I actually, when I think about like the idea of the video essay, which Andy and I have, Andy Rush and I have been talking about for a lot, and this idea of the grammar of the visual, yeah, and how do we kind of frame that and help people think about that? Um, Andy linked me out to a video recently, which was of this guy talking about The Shining, hmm. and this idea of the insane sense of space in The Shining, which is actually feeding into the idea that the actual whole set is in many ways this kind of absurd vision of the horror that's happening within this family and this mind. Yeah. And the way the guy visualizes this by talking over the video and explaining by looking at it, right. not only raises the question of new forms, but the more we stay with the kind of traditional forms of text and speaking into the camera and not building in these others, the more we kind of ignore and let the copyright designation of who owns and how right. to use this in fair use go away. I mean, it's actually... I wonder if some of the resistance to building in video and building in all these things is also the kind of minefield around some of that. Yeah. You know, I don't necessarily think that's why people are saying, okay, I won't do it. But they haven't made it easy right. to get access to these resources and to use them. I mean, there's amazing resources like archive.org. You can still have a lot of fun and there's a ton of resources out there. But I mean, more and more, I think we should be pushing on this just so that, yeah, maybe it's not perfect. But you start to learn a new skill of presenting, which is key. The right. students learn it. And also, you start to interact with this media that for so long has been kind of inaccessible mm. by the tools, if not by the copyright. And so I'm actually, that's why the whole the Dawn of the Dead that was mashed up with an archive.org mm. mashup I did a long time ago was just an experiment with three different ways of presenting an argument mm. through video about what something means. Mm. And that whole kind of idea of having fun with that and making your argument, like, you know, Martin Weller or anyone, because Martin Weller does great videos, like his video when he came from the future to right. tell us what it would be like, yeah. right? I mean, that idea is, you know, just get in there and even get some visuals you could speak over. Mm -hmm. right? Even something as simple as that, yeah. that brings in and then people can kind of see that. It makes a difference. And, you know, there's some people doing good style. You know, I know... You know, Dave Cormier's stuff for the MOOC is good. I mean, he, he does a little thing in the corner, but he's talking about and demonstrating things with, the, you know, the screencast over the website. Yeah. Uh, I've seen Dean Shoresky's done some great ones. He, he's done a lot. I, I picked up from him kind of using um, the multi-camera bit. You know, we tend to get locked into the one camera pointing yeah. on and doing the cuts between, you know, in his case, he might have two cameras going. You know, I, I saw in video where he did that thing in a classroom where he showed how he was setting up his video equipment. Yeah. Um, and that was well done, or just doing, you know, the one you were talking about. I just did, you know, multiple shots, but shifting, you know, your your uh, your video from head on to the side, and then your editing, you know, mixing those back and forth. Um, it's small, but that's that's like classic, you know, cinema technique. That's right. You know what the angle means, and it keeps people yeah. engaged. Yeah. I mean, the form itself keeps people engaged. That's what we're finding out with TV. I mean, this isn't a good example. The yeah. show, it's not like we're cutting out to video and yeah. showing people. So hey, you know. But that's actually what I've liked about DTL TV. Yeah. I mean, DTLT today is also the idea that when Andy and um, Tim were doing their show, there was one where Andy went around with a camera to show everybody what was happening yeah. in the green screen behind yeah. and like the background. And this double feature, this idea of these two lenses you're looking through. Right. It's compelling. You know what I mean? And that, and that whole bit about what, you know, just what the. Um the placement of uh, people on the screen and the angles. I mean, the, I think it was Roger Ebert had this great column where he, he really broke right. it down, um, d the different scenes from Notorious with the fact that someone was on the left side versus the right side or someone is larger or someone is, is at a higher vertical position. Yeah. And yeah, you read that, it's like, yeah, you know, that might make sense, but, you know, is that really true? But, 
you know, when you go back and watch the video, it's like it does make a difference, That's you right. know, wh whether the protagonist is on the left or the right. It's an interesting right. uh, you know, concept. I mean, it's a new form of composition. And if it's what you're expecting in massive online open courses where you're going to com be communicating ideas through video, right? then you would have to think that this isn't something you say I didn't have enough time for. Yeah. This is something you invested the time and energy to produce that. I mean, you wouldn't go into a class and say, well, I was going to lecture on this, but I didn't have time. Right. right. I mean, it just, not that, look, time, I understand time's short. I'm not trying to suggest that. But, I mean, this is part of the medium we live in and the composition we need to be fluid in and to I, communicate. Right. And, and I have to say, you know, I've done my share of really crappy videos and bad videos. And, you know, most of my YouTube videos are lucky if they get 20 views. So I'm not saying... I have this down, but you know, we, we continue, you know, just to try and, and, and try different approaches. Yeah. You know, so I, I think it's gotta be more than just sitting down and saying, you know, I'm just gonna talk into the camera. And if you're gonna talk in the camera, you know, be animated, be human, you know, use inflection. You know, and, and actually I had a, a good um I was talking when I was driving actually, I called Scott Lowe when he was on the radio. You yeah. know, he said I'm on the Skype. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, I was asking him about, you know, the part about, you know, I, I mock him because he's got that beautiful, deep FM DJ voice, you know, how yeah. he got it. And he, he made some joke about, you know, cigarettes and booze. But yeah. um, but then I t uh, he just, I forgot what... Which what, may not be a joke. Which may not be a joke. <laughs> but he, to he told me he the, the technique he learned is, is, you know, he's in front of the microphone, but he's on the radio. And he says he would put a picture of someone important to him, a family member or spouse, right behind the microphone huh. and for him that focused his concentration to be talking to the microphone as if he was talking to that person wow. you know is that a ploy is that a trick but you know uh, you know it's pretty self-conscious you know that's what Wesh did with that you know one of his first videos where the students talked about the one little clip where the girl talked about you know you know I'm not really talking to you I'm really sitting in front of this camera that's right it's this disembodied experience but when you get to understand what it's like seeing that you know some people can make that leap that they're actually communicating with someone out there. But, you know, when you're just sitting there looking at that little window. That's right. You know, it's, it's, it's a little disconcerting. Yeah, it is. So. And to speak of Wesh and think about what he did with web video to make a point. Yeah. About the changing nature of digital scholarship. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a perfect point, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, I'm interested in that, too. I mean, that's where we and many of us at DTLT have been focusing our energies on for the... Everybody, everybody out there. <laughs> we've been focusing our energies on this for years, yeah. right? And so, I mean, I couldn't agree more um, about the fact that if you're not experimenting with presentation, particularly given that we're in one of the richest mediums right now where you can, mm -hmm. right, it may be a disservice to your idea. That's the other thing, not to the people or anything, but just to the very idea you're trying to communicate to people. Yeah. That's where you might be hurting it most. So, I think that's right. And with that, that's it. That's it. DTLT today. Thank you very much for watching. Adios. Tune in again. All of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the whole league. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>